Okay, so this will be the third video of the Owl and Newt carving, and you guys know the struggle is real with this piece. But first of all, before I want to get working on this owl, I want to give my biggest shout out ever, well, one of them, um, to Mr. Brian Moore, the Midnight Shadow. Um, everybody, if you don't know who Brian is, he's a huge um, part of the Carving Fusion community. He's uh, so inspirational. He's he's in, chipped in lots of money. He helped me buy the new microphone that I have in my chainsaw carving tent. He sent me sprockets. He's just done so much. Well, Brian's had a stroke a few days ago. He's in the hospital. He's recovering. He's pulling through. So if everybody can um, leave a pos positive message underneath this video for Brian, um, it would be muchly appreciated because um, he's, you know, he's just one of the bigger, he's one of my friends that I've met uh, online. And um, just, this one's for you, Brian. Okay, so please leave a comment uh, down below so Brian can read them. Just press pause on this video and you can leave a comment for, him, for me and him. Thank you. I'm going to make sure he sees this video. So you can see here that I burnt uh, all this char in here. It's all burnt. It's sturdy, right? You know, some of it where I sp sprayed it with the clear coat is the char is locked in, so you can't really rub anything off. But what I want to do is I want to clean up around here on the outside a bit more. I got a Peter Blair sanding mandrel here with the scotch Bright. This is, you know, stuff that you use for automotive stuff or dishes. You get the stuff at the dollar store, the green stuff. It doesn't last longer. I'd suggest go to the uh, automotive shop, get yourself some automotive stuff. I just cut it up in little squares. And then you'll see, like, there's five pieces on here. And I just screwed them on. So you got to turn your Dremel down when you do this because this will fry your Dremel using this or the sandpaper so turn it down like half speed or whatever you want run it full blast fry your dremels like i do don't be a jordy so let's i'm going to clean that up i'll do and wear your desk masks 100 percent doing this stuff this whole piece you know i haven't worn my desk mask enough and i'm really feeling it in my lungs because the way this wood burns so we got a lot to do and i want to get this done so let's um i'll get this all cleaned up in here so if this doesn't clean it up good enough this one's kind of worn out I will use this mandrel with sandpaper on it. It's just a uh, emery cloth sandpaper. And um, I'll run it slow and try and clean it up a bit more. Okay, so I'll do that off camera. Keep okay, up. Okay, so I got it uh, cleaned up inside there the best I could. Um, I also got the sanding mandrel and I cleaned up the outside here because sometimes you can make the bark give the piece some character too, right? This bark was already worn off here, so I just sanded it off more. But see how I sanded there? Brought the color of the wood, then you got different colors in the bark. I might do a little bit more on these points, and maybe a little bit more, I'm not too sure. But now let's talk about, um, and any time you do any wood burning with the torch and clean it up, it's a dirty job. And it's, you know, it's a black dirty job. My hand, I had to clean my hand off. My face is just as black as my hand was, even though I was wearing my desk mask around it. So just... Be prepared to get dirty when you, it's basically called Shosugi Ban. So now let's talk about the owl eyes. I showed my second video. I got tons of different kind of eyes from when I first started carving. I didn't know what sizes to buy and what kinds to buy and stuff like that. I think your best bet is to go with the real glass ones, but they're more expensive. So I think these ones are probably like the size 10, 10, and 10 mm, you know, like the Chinese stuff metric. So if you look at it eyes, don't get confused, you know, like... Say if you look at the eyes on Amazon and you see they're 5 mm, go to Google and just Google search 10 mm to imperial, like it to inches. So to find out the real size, if you don't know the sizes, so does that make sense? Like convert it to inches, standard size. I think it's called imperial. So I got these yellow eyes. I like, I bought these ones because I like the way they did that on the outside, the yellow there. You see how they're kind of cut in. I got these ones, and I got uh, the orange ones like that. I asked Just Carve Rob, should I leave the normal eyes in, or should I put yellow eyes in or orange eyes in? He said the yellow eyes, these ones. So I said, good. I'm glad you chose yellow because I only have one of these orange eyes here, and I'd have to go back to my uh, chainsaw carving tent and get another orange eye, and I don't want to go back there. Not that you guys care, but whatever. So now... To put these eyes in you can see these are like teddy bear eyes you know you put this in here and they got a backing on it that would go on it right like like that 
But I'm going to um, put these yellow eyes in. Don't care. So I got this spade bit on a drill, and I measured the size. It's a little bit bigger than the owl eyes, so I'm going to, off camera, I'll have to do it. I'm going to drill this in here, drill this in here, just enough so the owl eye can sink in. You know, and you got these backs on here too, so I might get another drill bit and drill in the center of that so I can just push it in there. You don't even need to glue it in with these, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to do that uh, off camera, so a drill and a spade bit. Okay, yeah, bye. And I want to, so right now, these eyes are kind of looking, because they screwed up, looking that way. I want to make them looking straight at you. Okay, okay. <laughs> Hi, Liz. So if you haven't seen the second or the first video of this, owl in a nuck carving um it's going to be a lamp this is a lamp holder from uh, one of those salt lamps i got like five of these i bought a few years ago so i thought i'd use it up sign your pieces 2023 i got it right this time and there's a j um because this bottom piece doesn't you know it will sit there and then it's got like uh, the feet on the bottom of it. I'll also put these foamy things on the bottom I got from the dollar store. They're not the best. Hopefully they stick, but oh well. They make your piece sit better. But so how I hold this out, I just thought I'd show you guys. This is an aluminum cutting bit. I use this lots for um, doing the beard hairs on the wood spirits and eyebrows and stuff like that, and textures. But this bit here is good for doing stairs. It's good for getting a straight cut because it's got teeth on the bottom. It's a cylinder. And it's got uh, the flutes on the side. So you can get a nice square cut. So I did all that. You know, so I know I, for lots of you subscribers or even the new subscribers, I say on my videos, you know, don't care what other people are doing. Just have fun and believe in yourself. So that's what I was doing with this piece. I was having fun, believing in myself and just continuing to progress through the piece. Even though this was a real struggle for me. I've, I've continued to work through it and get through all the shitty parts. You know, like, I think this looks pretty natural. This, there's a couple holes here, like a cuts that I did, like that and that. Somebody buying this piece might, piece might say, well, what's that cut there and what's that? And I'll say, well, they're old bug holes. There's no bugs in this piece, but there's a few bug holes. I thought I'd leave them to leave it natural. I could cut those out and clean them up, but I'm not really interested. So you can see that I cleaned up a lot more of the bark and sanded it just to give it that different texture. So, you know, and there's always a point in your carving or your art piece that you don't like it. Lots of this owl carving, there's been where I did not like it. And I just said, I'm had enough with this, this, because it's like I say, the struggle's real. But if you keep moving forward and try your hardest, you don't have to be a crazy good artist, but the more that you do, the better that you're going to get, right? So... What I'm going to have to do, now, I'm not too sure about that hole in the back. Oops. I cleaned it up. Okay, so there's no paint on here, so I sanded it. I'm not sure if I'm going to like the light in the hole in the back shining on the back wall. I don't know if I want this to be more of a solid piece. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to tape this owl up, and I'm going to spray this whole piece. I'm going to give it a clear coat. Hold on a second, please. So, like I say in lots of my other videos too, you do need not need to put a clear coat or a wood finish on your wood carvings. You can leave it natural. This is an indoor piece. This might go gray in a hundred years if it's not in direct sun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this owl up. I'm going to leave this owl natural because I like the color of it. Right? I, you know, if you do, I don't want to do a water tester on it because then I can't put tape on it. But I like the color of it the way it is right now. But I do want to give this whole piece everywhere a clear coat because it will lock on the bark good too. It will kind of be like glue a little bit. And it will give it a, a nice shine. And it will also make your colors pop. So you got white there, pretend white, yellow, and then orange, right? And then all this where I burnt it, all in the back, it's going to go super dark. I know that. It's going to separate the dark from the white a lot better, but it will make everything a lot smoother. I don't need to spray this with anything. I do not need to spray it. it you can call her done. But right now we're far from done. I'll see. I'll spray it. I'll let it dry. I'll show you guys after it's dry. And I'm not sure about the hole in the back. I might have to use some uh, 
epoxy sculpt to fill up that hole. Okay, so it's time to do the unveiling. So you know you see here where it's kind of shiny, then over here it's not shiny? That's because I only gave it one coat. You know, if you give it one coat, let it sit a day, cure properly, you know, like this wood was more, it sucked in the, the friggin' spray stuff more than this piece right there. So, but if you let it cure in, it will be like a hard plastic. Spray it again and it will all be consistent, shiny like that. I did spray it with, I, I said, I don't want this part too shiny. So when it was still wet, I did spray it with um, satin so it wouldn't be so shiny. But I'm happy with that shiny part and the odd part shiny. It's not consistent and that's what my pieces are about. So let's do the big unveiling. Let's get the tape off this owl and see how much it sticks out from the uh, not spraying it. Oh boy. I thought this was going to be like a, a grand unveiling, but maybe I should see if we can do this. Oh yeah, there we go. This is what I was hoping for. About time something works out. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm happy with it. You know, like, like I just said earlier, all the struggles and stuff like that, you just have to, you just have to stand by. You know, the oranges and stuff didn't really pop through too much, but you can see the color difference there, there, and then the, the natural color of the wood. I'm happy with this. So I think I need to do a little carving, one more Big L Carving Fusion upgrade before uh, we try the light out. Okay, Big L, here comes the Carving Fusion upgrade. We put some silly little mushrooms in there with the silly little owl. What do you think? And some moss. Put some moss down here, up here. With this moss, it's just like dollar store stuff. Um, I like to spray it. It's a kind of a funny story for you. Practice what you preach. Hypocrite I am. Um, I spray that moss with this stuff too. It kind of makes it like plastic. But... When I was spraying this, I sprayed the owl too, and I said, man, I just made, I just said you don't need to friggin' spray your, finish off your wood carvings, and then there I did it. But it's okay, it turned out, it kind of blended it in better. Alright, so this uh, salt lamp has a dimmer switch on it too. So there's a light in there. Let me kill these lights, and uh, we'll see how it looks. Okay, so I know with lighting on the videos, it never really works out too good. Oh, I forgot to paint its beak black too, but maybe it doesn't even need to be painted. So there's how the gloss kind of shines through. Um, let's dim it up and dim it down. It's not even that dark yet, really. So I got this, I think this bulb here is brighter. So I'm going to put this one in and uh, I got my the bedroom lights on in here too. So we'll try and make it a bit darker. Okay, so now I'm just going to unscrew this light bulb. There you go. It's almost unscrewed. So there's a light, and there's a light in the background. You know, it's hard to see in the camera, but this kind of looks like it's like a sun coming out from it. Let's turn the light back on. I think what I'm going to, let's give you a wide view of this. So I'm not really a huge fan of that light coming out in the background because I think the light should just be concealed in here. This is just a little, little, it's not like a light to friggin' light up your whole living room, you know. It's just a little kind of nice little light effect thing. But um, so let me tape up that back. Okay, so I got this metal tape on the back. This is the strongest tape if you ever guys want to get uh, metalworking tape. It's the stickiest stuff. You got to peel the paper off. It's a bitch, but it's awesome stuff. So let's uh, turn this around, and we'll kind of leave it out from the background too. Turn, hit this bulb. Yeah, so that's a lot better for me because then it's not even that dark right now too. So and then it's just like a, an owl in a lamp. I'm going to get some of those color light bulbs that co change color. You can get the flame ones too. So I'm pretty happy with it. It's It was a lot of work and I can see the, I can't, let me get this light back on here. What's going on with these? These LED lights they make nowadays are so friggin' cheap. But I can see red back there where I did put spray paint. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera. Yeah, you can see it in there. Just have fun, everybody. You know, that's what it's about. Just have fun, challenge yourself, and don't quit. How are you going to learn if you don't, if you quit, you know? So that's it for the owl video. Um, a place got a hold of me yesterday, and possibly I'll find out today is Monday. I'll find out Wednesday afternoon. They might want me to carve 60 wood spirits for a convention thing that they're having. 
and they also might want me to um, do a, a live carving at this convention so but that won't be talked too much about on YouTube but anyways I'll let you guys know if it happens so that's it have fun carry on and um, thanks for the support and I was talking to my buddy Chris Warrior today he said I used to say on my videos you know I support you guys more than you support me it's true you guys I thank you so much for all the support but you know if you really knew who I was as a friend I probably do support you more than you support me without sounding rude just basically saying that I, I care and I support I support all new artists and stuff like that if I have time thanks everybody see you on the next one woo 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 <laughs> I just sprayed it with some more of this stuff and <laughs> it stinks sorry one more thing everybody I forgot to say um you know it's probably a lot easier for you to do a, a light carving like this if the um, if you had a hollow rotten log already that was rotten in the middle, anyways, just thought I'd try and save you some time. Ooh, ooh.